Good morning, everybody. It's uh, delightful to see you here this morning in uh, Cardiff Sixth Song College in Cambridge. Uh, nice to see uh, some uh, faces on here and some names on here that I recognise. I'm delighted to be able to be speaking to you uh, this morning. Um, my name is uh, Gareth Collier. I'm the principal of Cardiff Sixth Form College. Uh, together on the call here, I have some colleagues uh, who are here to assist and help. But most important amongst those uh, is Dr. Julian Davis who is in fact the head uh, teacher of uh, Cardiff Sixman College in Cambridge. And he's here specifically today to help to answer questions about our exciting new campus here in uh, the UK's most academic city. Uh, so without further ado, what I'd like to do is I'd like to share uh, with you uh, a short presentation. I will introduce Cardiff Sixman College uh, as a concept to you, which I, I apologize if you know all this already, uh, but it's important to, to set some standards uh, and to set the groundwork for where we want to, to be next. Um, Dr. Davis will then uh, talk specifically about Cardiff Sixman College in Cambridge uh, and uh, the wonderful new offer we have here. And then, of course, I'd be delighted to, uh, to take uh, questions and answers at the end. To facilitate that, if you'd like to drop a question into the chat box uh, as you're going through so that you don't forget it, because I'm sure there'll be lots of information, I'd be very happy to, uh, to go through those questions when we get to the Q&A session at the very end. Uh, there should be plenty of time to discover all about us uh, and the wonderful work that our students are currently doing uh, downstairs right now. So just bear with me one second whilst I share my screen and we can make a start. There we go. Dr. Davis, would you just give me a thumbs up if, if that screen is available and people can see it? Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Excellent. So let me start the show. So, Carly Sixon College. Uh, you'll uh, all be aware of who we are and, and what we do. Uh, you're, you're obviously on this call because you're interested in being at the top academic school. And we like to say this is the place to be if you are an ambitious student, if you are wanting to uh, excel, if you wanted to go to top courses at top universities, uh, if you want to be uh, working hard for an aspirational future, this is the place to be. Oh, can anybody hear me? Yes, Gareth, we can hear you. Lovely, I have a little notice saying Zoom has quit unexpectedly. I'll just stop that. There we go. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm principal, Cardiff Sixth Storm College, uh, both here in Cambridge and in Cardiff itself. Our vision in uh, Cardiff Sixth Storm College is to be the best academic school in the world. The best academic school is, is a tough vision, and vision should always be aspirational. It should always be just out of reach, so you're working hard to get to be there. Uh, difficult to define what best is, difficult even to define what academic is, even the word school and definitely the word world. But it's something that we strive for. And it's important that all schools don't feel as if they have reached their destination. That actually, we as a, a body, as staff uh, and as directors, we are working hard to become better ourselves every single day. We are vision uh, led and mission managed. And perhaps uh, the three most important missions here at the top for our students that join us uh, are the academic, the careers and the pastoral. So we have teaching and learning here, which challenges, inspires, demands and delivers excellence. I absolutely want you as students uh, and, and your children, if you're here as parents, to understand that we are delivering an excellent level of academic education. Uh, and I expect an excellent level of participation uh, from my teachers and from the students involved. It is a very high performing environment in which we expect students to do excellently. There are very few places in the whole world in education who expect all students to achieve excellence. It is an absolute expectation of what we do at Cardiff Sixth College. But it's not just about what we do here within the college, it's about our careers mission. And we have outstanding guidance tailored to the individual's needs and aspirations. And I know that Dr. Davis will talk to you a little more about the unique offering we have here within uh, CSFC Cambridge to help us with that careers mission. And lastly, our pastoral mission, safe, caring, compassionate, understanding, and the tricky one, developmental care. We are a stepping stone to university. 
It's important that our students transition out of a normal home and school life into being able to live and thrive independently. And because of that, we have a development, developmental care system where students are uh, assisted to have these independent living skills. Our two other uh, missions here are administrative and sustainable, and we are investing both for and in the future of uh, our children and our, and our school. So who are we? Well, we are one college with two campuses. Cardiff Sipson College is one college and two bases. The traditional one that we have in Cardiff, which is actually only 14 years old. Uh, it's a relative newcomer on the, uh, on the stage, but has achieved excellence in uh, every year that it has uh, been in existence. And we now have our new campus in Cambridge. So Cardiff, the boutique capital city of Wales, and Cambridge, the bespoke academic city of the United Kingdom. And we're delighted to be in these. And Dr. Davis, I'm sure, will be talking to you about why Cambridge is the ideal choice uh, for uh, this new and exciting venture. And this is who we are. You've seen my picture. Uh, and uh, now you can see uh, the heads of both campuses here. Uh, Tom Aaron, who is the head of Cardiff Sipson College in Cardiff, and uh, Dr. Julian Davis, who will speak to you in a moment, who is the head of CSFC Cambridge. Our results, just to show you how we've been doing uh, over the, the last 11 years, our results have been consistently high. In pink, there are the COVID years, uh, where our assessment was uh, changed uh, to suit the circumstances. But you can see the quality of uh, our achievement at A-level is outstanding. A 75% A-star achievement in 2022, 99% uh, A-star to B, and 95% A-star to A. As you can see, outside of the COVID years, this is the best year we have ever had in 2022. And the important thing here is that the academic standards in uh, Cardiff Sipson College in Cambridge will be maintained uh, at the same high levels that they are in Cardiff. We can see here that we, we sit at the top of the Telegraph uh, independent school league tables uh, for 2022. Uh, we have uh, been pretty much at the top uh, echelons of this in the entire existence of the school. And we're delighted to be high performing. Our A-levels that we do uh, in both of our colleges, uh, you can see we do a two-year A-level course. In order to enter our two-year A-level course, you need to be examined in all four subjects that you wish to study with us. Our students start taking four A-levels, uh, and uh, in essence, some of them uh, can add other subjects like an EPQ, which I'll explain in a moment. They would need to be equivalent of six A-stars, or nines or eights, GCSE or IGCSE. They need to have an IELTS examination of 6.5 with a minimum of 6.0 in any of the four categories. We do an online assessment, a GL assessment, an interview, reports and reference, all extremely important parts of our admissions process. I often tell people that there's no such thing as a bad school in the United Kingdom, but there is such a thing as a bad fit. And it's important that we as a school take our responsibilities for selection and admissions very carefully. We're not a school that simply says, oh yes, yes, please come. We're a school that says, do we fit you? Do you actually want what we provide? And will you be able to thrive under the systems that we have in place? And that's why our admissions process is exacting, it's careful, uh, and sometimes it can take a little time to make sure we have everything right, because we want it to be a success for you as students and uh, for your children if you're here as, as parents. Uh, just to explain a little bit about the differences and the similarities in A-levels between uh, CSFC Cardiff and CSFC Cambridge. In CSFP Cardiff, we run the Wealth Joint Education Committee model of modular A-levels. This means at the end of your first year, you will sit AS examinations, which count for 40% of your final A-level. And that's an advantage uh, should you uh, be an excellent student. But there's other advantages in here as well. Firstly, being able to sit real-time examinations, which are moderated externally, means that you understand what uh, the final outcome of A-levels are going to be like. It's not a one-shot at the end system. And so doing AS examinations enables you to familiarize yourself with the routines uh, and the systems of examination in the British way. And very important if you've not been examined in the United Kingdom previously, it is a very specific way uh, of assessment. And then and finally, at the end of your, your two years uh, in CSFC Cardiff, you would sit the final 60% of your A2 examinations, which would add together to be your A-levels. The second uh, important reason why ASs uh, are something that we choose to undertake uh, is that 
At the end of your first year, you will be submitting your university application, be it through the UCAS system in the United Kingdom or through uh, the uh, American application system through the Common App or individually to American universities or indeed to other international universities around the world. It's important that uh, these, these universities actually have faith in the, in the integrity of the grades that students are given by their teachers. And so by doing AS levels, actually the universities can see definitively exactly how well the student is performing. It's not a predicted grade. It is an actual grade showing how well a student is doing. And if a student does excellently in their AS examinations, then they have excellent offers from top universities. Obviously, the opposite is also true. In that if they don't do well in their ASs, then unfortunately, their likelihood of getting uh, top offers is reduced. Which is why our academic approach, our assessment models, our reporting and recording modules, our support systems for students in their first year is outstandingly high. It's there to help students to make to achieve excellence. Moving on to uh, the Cambridge system. In England, uh, we, uh, we will follow the EDUCAS board. Now, this is the English arm of the WJEC. In essence, the uh, majority of the services and uh, schemes work are virtually identical. The difference here in uh, England is that A-levels are linear, which means that you would, in effect, in most schools, sit your A-levels entirely at the end of your second year and do no external assessment up to that point. However, here in CSFC Cambridge, we don't believe that that's the best way uh, to help our students gain top places at top universities. And therefore, just as in Cardiff, our students here will sit their AS examinations as appropriate at the end of their first year, allowing them to have a set of results that the, the uh, universities can trust and make excellent offers on. These also fulfill the requirement for students to understand the examination system, just as they do in CSFC Cardiff. The only difference is that the ASs are standalone qualifications. They actually count for something as an examination itself, but they don't contribute to the final A-level grade, where students will again be examined on the full two-year material at the end of their second year. So an advantage, if you like, for the CSFC Cambridge students who will understand how to be examined and how to achieve well, and will also have learned and understood this information ready for their examination in the second year. I'm going to say a little more about this. Uh, you can see the subjects that we have on offer here, uh, the differences between the two schools. There is a strong humanities focus there in Cardiff, and there's a strong computer science and psychology focus uh, in, uh, in uh, Cambridge, along with the standard STEM offer of the three sciences, the two mathematics uh, in, in both areas. The supporting curriculum, the EPQ, the extended project qualification, PSE, personal social education, EAP, English for Academic Performance, and UAP, University Application Process, are all a part, uh, a common part of what we do in both colleges. And they are managed by our central single college system with high class staff from Cardiff uh, being involved and mentoring uh, the Cambridge staff to ensure that our quality and our standards are maintained across both campuses. I'm going to stop sharing my screen there. Thank you very much for, for listening to me. Uh, I shall come back at the end here, uh, ready for a Q&A session. But I'm going to hand uh, over now uh, to uh, Dr. Davis, who will be able to uh, share with you uh, his insights into his first term here uh, at CSFC Cambridge and the wonderful work that is going on here by both our students and our staff. Dr. Davis, thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Mr. Collier. Um, so, hello, welcome, and good morning from Abbey um, Cardiff Sixth Form College here in Cambridge. The sun is shining. It's a gorgeous day, as it always is in Cambridge. And I'm delighted to be able to speak with you and tell you about what we are doing here. So there are two aspects that I want to talk about to you this morning. The first one is how have we transferred the Cardiff academic model to a new school? How have we done that? How have we brought the Cardiff excellence? And to reassure you that we have indeed done that. We have brought the Cardiff excellence uh, right here to Cambridge. That's the first aspect. What's it like here? How are we reaching high academic standards? The second part I'd like to tell you about is why have we done this in Cambridge? Why have we chosen to open Cardiff Sixth Form here? Why did we not choose a different city? And what is therefore the advantage 
of being in Cambridge. So let me share my screen with you. Oh, let's have a look. I'm not sure I've got permission am I, to share that. Mr. Collier, can you? Ah, there we are, I've made it work. How about that? Brilliant. So there we are, the academic challenge at Cardiff Sixth Form College. So before I start talking about those two areas, how have we brought the Cardiff model here and what is it about Cambridge that we're benefiting from? I'll just give you a little bit about me. Um, so my name is Dr. Julian Davis. I'm the, the head here at Cardiff Sixth Form College in Cambridge. I have been in Cambridge for 25 years. Um, I'm Welsh, so actually I'm now working with a group from Wales, so that's quite exciting to, to go back to my roots. I'm from West Wales. Um, but being in Cambridge for 25 years, I've worked in education during that time. Um, I'm a scientist by training. I'm actually a microbiologist um, in my academic life before that. But for the last 25 years, I've been working in independent sixth form education here in Cambridge and for the last 20 years as principal of uh, another sixth form college. So the opportunity to start Cardiff Sixth Form College was simply too good for me to pass over. So I was delighted to be able to come as the founding head of this amazing school. OK, so let me talk you through about why I think this school is amazing. That first aspect, how have we borrowed and made our own the Cardiff academic model? So the Cardiff academic model, by that I mean, how is it that in Cardiff Sixth Form, in Cardiff, they get such extraordinary results, year in and year out. They must have an amazing academic system. They do. That academic system involves rigorous teaching, teaching of very high quality, so you need obviously very well qualified, ambitious teachers for that. You need very high quality resources, you need a rigorous, well thought out process of assessment, and when you assess children, you then need to make sure that children get the benefit of being assessed. In other words, you give them very high quality feedback so they know how to correct any errors. And then on top of that, you inspire them to move beyond and reach not just for A star, but for true mastery and love of their subject. So how have we practically done that? Well, all of my teachers here in Cambridge have a mentor in Cardiff. So in chemistry, the head of chemistry in, in Cardiff has supplied all the resources to my chemistry teacher here in Cambridge. The same for all of our subjects. This means the resources that we use, the planning of our curriculum, which you have to think through very carefully how to sequence our curriculum. That planning, the notes, the resources, the homeworks, the tests, the mark schemes, everything that we use is being used right now in Cardiff. We've taken exactly the model. So for example, when we do our testing, so we're very keen on testing. We think it's very important to show, to, to show children their progress, to show how they can correct mistakes in their learning. So, so far we've undertaken three tests. We call them exam practice tests and mock exams. Cardiff have undertaken exactly the same testing using the same papers at the same time marked to the same standard and moderated together. So that means students sitting in a biology lesson in Cardiff and students sitting in a biology lesson here in Cambridge are receiving the same high quality teaching using the same notes, literally the same notes at the same time. When they do homework, it's the same, it's marked to the same standard. And when they do those tests, so far three, they are the same tests at the same time of day. We've marked them exactly the same. That's very, very important because then as head, I can work with, with Mr. Arend in Cardiff, the head there, and we can compare the results of the tests in Cardiff and the tests in Cambridge. So far, three tests, we're bang on. We're bang on track. In other words, the results of my students here in Cambridge are the same as the results in Cardiff right now. That gives us great confidence because that's three rounds of testing already. It gives us great confidence that these students here will indeed get fantastic grades when they sit their A-levels next year, the same as in Cardiff. So we're confident because we've got the model, we've got the aspiration, we've got the teachers, we've got the evidence now 
that we will attain the same academic standards. So that's the first very important message I hope to give you this morning is we've set this school up with great intent, with great seriousness to take the very best education that international students and home students are getting in Cardiff and bringing it here. So far, the evidence from those three rounds of testing says we're doing that. Now, we'll carry on, we'll be ambitious, and we're going to absolutely ensure these children get the best possible grades. And that's actually my commitment to the children than the parents when they, when, they, when they attend my school now in Cambridge, is we will do everything in our powers to get you those top grades and see you go to amazing universities. And that's, that's why I've come here. That's why I've decided to, to start this school with Mr. Collier. Okay, let's move on. What do we do? Well, we do A-levels. We're specialists in a narrow subject range. So sciences, chemistry, biology, physics, psychology, mathematics and further mathematics, economics and computer science. Those are our eight subjects. And you might wonder, why don't you add more? Why not have a full range? Well, the key word there is specialist. If you specialize, then you end up with a team of teachers working together on a narrower curriculum range, which they can then prove utter mastery of. So because we've got a small subject range, our students are very focused here. We have STEM students, we have medics, engineers, we have people who want to do finance at university, software engineers, and we can focus on those aspirations, not just in the subjects, but also when it comes to careers and advice. So it is a subject range of essentially what you might call STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, with economics uh, added to it. So a narrow curriculum range, as I mentioned, they are all taught in the way that's happening right now in Cardiff, with one exception. It's on the screen there, computer science. Computer science is a brand new subject. So how do you know that we're teaching it well? Well, it's very simple. We're in Cambridge. We're using a Cambridge lecturer to deliver the computer science course. Very highly qualified lecturer, able to teach undergraduate and even postgraduate. So when she's teaching our A-level course, she has absolute command over the subjects. So there we are. That's the curriculum. Where are we working? Well, right now I'm sitting in the building, uh, the brown building there, this glorious Victorian building. We're right in the middle of Cambridge. If I look out of my window, which is on the bottom right there, across the road, there's a row of houses over the top, behind, behind those houses and shops, it's Cambridge University, Downing College. If I walk one minute to my right, I come to Emmanuel College. If I walk around the corner, it's the chemistry department. If I spend five minutes further, the engineering department. Two minutes this way are the museum site. Now Cambridge has amazing science and natural history, anthropology, uh, uh, humanities museums. It's amazing what is in this city. We're right in the center in that building. Five minutes away is our science center and our canteen and our medical center. So when I say high spec, you might think, well, those buildings are quite old. Yes, the buildings in Cambridge are all old. <laughs> it is an old city and you're not really allowed to knock them down and build new ones. So with these wonderful old buildings, we've completely refurbished. So what we have inside state of the art, brand new laboratories, brand new teaching classrooms, beautifully decorated with the technology on the walls, interactive screens, all of the things you would expect from a purpose-built school, but we're using these old historic buildings because that's what Cambridge is. Okay, where are you going to live? Well, the boarding house is another five minutes walk again. So in Cambridge, it's a small city and it's very easy to get around on foot or perhaps on a bicycle. Um, there's lots of very good buses as well. The public transport systems here are very, very good. So people don't tend to drive in this city. They walk, they cycle, they get the bus. So um, down a little bit further from the, the, uh, the science center, about a five, 10 minute walk is our accommodation complex. And you can see it is a complex. The students all live together. All of the Cardiff Sixth Form students are in one boarding complex together. Now that's wonderful for feel of community. All of our students study together. They have their, their meals together in that canteen. They live together with our boarding staff that live with them. 
So you get that great sense of being with your friends, studying with them and living with them. So you're not, you won't be isolated. You're not going to have to walk through Cambridge to a host family or a different boarding house. You'll be walking with all the other students when you go home after school. Um, and you'll be doing activities there with them on the weekends with the boarding staff. And the boarding staff themselves live there and will get to know you. They'll look after you, of course, guide you, help with you with, their, with settling in, help you with any questions. And we have a matron living there. And very close by is that medical centre I mentioned. Um, the, that's based in the building where the science department is actually next door to that. So there is a nurse that will be there for all of our students, um, who, of course, are registered with a GP. So children study together in those two buildings, live together in this complex here, um, which is very close by. OK, so you might wonder, we're a new school. Do you have all of the opportunities that schools that have been in existence for longer have? Yes, we do. We've launched using the academic model from Cardiff, so we didn't have to start the academic model. We've got the best in the country We're using that academic model. We also have a full extracurricular program. So that is debate club, model United Nation, art, science club, uh, bio, um, uh, medical science club, engineering club. We also play basketball, badminton, squash. We've got students going swimming, going to water polo. There's a lot of activities right from the start. And the reason we can have such a full academic program is because we have a sister college called St. Andrews, part of the wider company that we belong to. And our children will uh, engage in an extracurricular program jointly with that school. So we've already got a school in existence that we use for this full extracurricular program. And the children make full use of it because the children that are here are ambitious. They have a well-rounded attitude to life. I, I think they enjoy studying hard, but also they like to, to play basketball of an evening. They like to take part in music. We, we have a little uh, music offering here. We've got a concert that we've had in Christmas time. There's a piano in the common room. There's also a separate music club and music facilities. So it's important that we have this full extracurricular program. It is in existence right now, even though we're a brand new school. Okay. So that hopefully gives you a sense of how we can operate in this new school, in this wonderful city, to a high standard, because we're using the model from Cardiff that is proven over the last 11 years to deliver the best results for A-level in the country. We're privileged to be able to do that here, supported by these refurbished, beautiful buildings, accommodation very close, full extracurricular program. So I'm confident that our children are going to do very well here. And as I mentioned, I, 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 this is my statement of intent to parents and to children. If you come here, you'll be incredibly well supported in all areas. So that's the first of the two areas I wanted to talk about. If you remember from the beginning, I said, I want to talk about the academic. What are we doing here? And why did we come to Cambridge? Why are we in Cambridge? Well, I want to introduce to you the Cambridge Edge. This is the term that we use here that encapsulates why we are in Cambridge. Because let's face it, we could have chosen any city. We could have chosen to be in the countryside. Many boarding schools are in the countryside in this country. But we've decided not just to come to Cambridge, but to come to the center of Cambridge, right here in the middle of it, in, 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 in the heart of this city. Why? Well, you know about Cambridge. It's got a reputation as one of the world's leading education cities. This is something that is very well uh, understood. What that actually means is there are people in the college that's just across the road right now working at world level research. If you take the entire university, that's cutting edge, world class research in all academic areas. It's a full spectrum university, of course, Cambridge University. So there are historians, there are authors, there are people looking at engineering, nanotechnology, biotech. And around the university, there are many companies who want to be close to the university to benefit from that expertise. So you'll see around the university, on the way, on the road I'm on now, if you walk past where our canteen is and the Science Center, you then walk past a headquarters for AstraZeneca. 
Now, you might have heard of AstraZeneca because they are one of the companies that developed a COVID vaccination that was widely used across the world. The headquarters is five minutes away. If you turn left rather than going straight, you get to Microsoft's European headquarters. That's just next to the station in Cambridge, an enormous building, of course, as you would expect for Microsoft. Apple are based here. And just on the outskirts of Cambridge, there's the Medical Research Council, which is for Britain, one of the leading research institutes funded by central government. It's located in the teaching hospital for Cambridge University. And that's on the same road as you go out of town. That's an enormous teaching university with many departments from the university that are part of it. If you go further out of Cambridge, you get to the Wellcome Institute. Again, you may have heard of this as a biotechnology superpower. And beyond that is the Sanger Center. The Sanger Center is where they sequenced the human genome. That's one of the great scientific leaps that were made at the late 20th century. So it's happening here in Cambridge. And you might think, well, so what? That's happening there. How does that affect you? Well, we have designed a program for the very best students, in other words, all of the students here, to take advantage of being in Cambridge, to give them the Cambridge edge. It's designed to help them excel. So what does this mean? Let's look at some examples. Here's the map of Cambridge. That's, uh, it's a, an old city. Of course it is, it's a medieval city. How can you tell it's an old city? Well, you can just about see on that map, the roads, come into the center. They're like spokes coming into the middle of a wheel. And that's a hallmark of a medieval city. Modern cities, of course, are based on grids, which are more convenient for modern transport. Cambridge, being very old, is of course a medieval city, as I mentioned. What you can see there, you can make out there, the blue line is the river, the river Cam. And you can see some of the bridges across the river, some of the Cam bridges. Cambridge, that's why it's named. But perhaps more important than that, you can see the orange buildings. That's the university. Those are the university colleges. You can see the city of Cambridge is built around the university colleges. The blue buildings are the academic departments. So again, you can see the blue buildings form Cambridge. And you can see the red stars down the bottom right of the image. The first red star next to that green park is where I am right now. And you can see across from it, if you can make out is Downing College, that's there. Downing College, by the way, the design of it is the inspiration for the big American universities, the famous ones like Harvard and Yale. They were designed based on the way that Downing College looks. You can see the other star, by the way, is our science department, canteen and medical center. So we are in the city of Cambridge. It is very easy to go to museums, to academic departments, to lectures. Because we're very close, it's very easy for lecturers, for research students, for other staff to come and see us because we're minutes away. Couldn't be more convenient. So how have we benefited from this? So let me talk you through some of the Cambridge Edge. So the Cambridge Edge, we're using what is here. Some of those things will include going to lectures. Now there are public lectures in the evenings in Cambridge. They are very poorly advertised because they're advertised by academics, not by marketing and sales people. So it's, you don't tend to see them advertised very well, actually. However, I know where to look. And so we make it um, publicized to our students here. We say to our students, look, here's a lecture on black holes by Dr. Robert Wall from the University of Chicago. He's visiting Cambridge, world leading expert on black holes. There he is in that image, surrounded by my students. So we walked to the lecture theater that's five minutes away at six o'clock on Monday in November to listen to an expert in his field, visiting Cambridge, deliver his lecture. So of course, the reason we didn't put this college in the countryside or in a different town or city in, in, in the UK is because we couldn't do this. We can do this because the lecture theater is five minutes away, literally five minutes away from us. Extraordinary opportunities. But here's the thing. The reason it's an edge is because I'm not just telling the students, oh, this lecture's happening. 
I'm having an assembly with them. And I'm saying to them, to their faces, looking them in the eye, saying, if you love physics, mathematics, astronomy, if you want to see what it's actually like listening to a world expert, come after supper and join us. So we're building a culture here where we take part in these things. It's not an unusual event. So actually, we've been to many lectures, even though we've only been in existence since September. We've been to lectures on, on black holes. We've had a, a very well-known author and scientific um, publisher give us a talk. Uh, we're going to a talk this evening. We went to a talk last week from Professor Vella, who's actually from Oxford University, visiting Cambridge. She was talking about Gauss's theorem, so something for the mathematicians. We've also been able to visit surgery uh, workshops that have been going on in Cambridge from the teaching hospital. Okay. Teaching hospitals, of course, are very good at teaching medicine, and they are then able also to help A-level students. So they come and they offer these uh, surgery days here in Cambridge. So what is, what is the most important part of this? Is the student participation. They are encouraged in this school to go to lectures because it's what we do. It's part of culture. I mentioned that word. It's very important. Culture is, is how we do things here. And how we do things here is we engage with what is happening five minutes away on a Monday evening. So the talk, for example, that the students went to on Monday the 30th of January last week is in a very strangely named lecture theatre, Bristol Myers Squib. And it's just there extraordinary opportunity to just walk into a lecture. So how to get the best from this? That's the key thing, because you could go to a lecture, you could sit at the back, take some notes, think, oh, that's good. I went to a Cambridge University lecture and then you could leave. However, what I say to the children here, to my students is you are aiming for a top university. You're aiming for Cambridge, maybe, or, or Harvard, or maybe you're going for a course that's really competitive like medicine. What we need to help you to do is to become more confident in yourself. So we're gonna teach you the science subjects and the maths and the computer science and economics. That's great, you'll do well in those. However, I want you to also become more confident in talking about those things so that when you go to the university interview, you're better prepared. Now, what most schools do when it comes to university interviews is they give interview practice. We do this. Mock interview practice might happen a month before the interview, or maybe two weeks before. Maybe you'll do two or three. We will do more than two or three. However, my experience with my 20 years as being a principal is that students need much longer than that. Because a mock interview, if you do it with two weeks before the real interview, there's not enough time to respond and help the student to develop. That's what we're doing with Cambridge Edge. I'm helping these amazing children develop their confidence. So when it comes to a real interview, they are more comfortable in talking about themselves. They can sit up straight and they can say, yes, I went to this engineering uh, lecture. I went to the University of uh, uh, Cambridge's chemistry department and I listened to Professor Ward from Chicago University talking about this aspect of black holes. And then I spoke to him and that's the final part of this puzzle. What we do with our students is we encourage them not just to sit at the back of a lecture theatre, but when the lecture's over, to be brave, to stand up straight, walk down and shake the hand of the lecturer and say, thank you very much. That was interesting. Can I ask a question? Actually, face-to-face -face contact, engaging with that lecturer. And of course, the lecturers are very generous people because they love their subject. That's why they're lecturers. And they're only too pleased when a 17 year old student comes and speaks to them afterwards. And what we then do is we say to the student, do you think you could ask the lecturer maybe for a visit, visit to their academic department? And you know what, if you ask a lecturer, you know what, that was very interesting. I enjoyed your work. It made me think about this. I have this question. Do you think I could come and visit? Is, is there a, is there a postgraduate in your department that could show me around? If you ask these questions, you'll be amazed at what you get because the answer is yes. They will be over the moon to let you come in. The professor may not show you around his laboratory, 
but a PhD student might. Uh, this is what I did, by the way, when I was a PhD student, I showed uh, students from schools around my laboratory. So that's what this edge is all about. It's going and using things that are in Cambridge, such as lectures, but actually being brave and learning how to stand up straight and how to give an account of yourself and practice speaking to professors because most students have never done this before and you have to learn how to do it. You get better the more you do it. Other things, this is really a wonderful uh, aspect of the time here for students. Last week, we had our second student mentors meeting. So that's a group of students you can see meeting Cambridge University undergraduates. They have a mentor. Every student in CFC Cambridge has a mentor who is a former student of CFC College in Cardiff. So students, in other words, who've been through this academic system in Cardiff successfully got to the university and they're now undergraduates, extremely hardworking, busy, ambitious people. And we benefit from our students meeting them, talking to them. And talking of sitting, standing up straight and giving an account of yourself, this is a really good way for our students to have that experience because the respect you give to somebody who's 20, 21, who's done what you're trying to do is immense. You will learn a huge amount from talking to people who've done what you're trying to do yourself. And those students, those undergraduates are, of course, they're very generous because they know how hard it is. They know what you have to do. And they're very happy to give advice and pass this on. So our mentors have met twice. We're now gonna set up email contact so they can carry on their conversations and there'll be yet further uh, conversations with our students and the mentors. And of course, because we're an ambitious students, we're an ambitious college and we have a, um, a culture where we are aspiring to growth and excellence. What I've told my students in year 12 is when they get to university and they excel, they too will become mentors for the year 12s at that time. So of course they're thinking about that. They're being told, you can do this as well. We're constantly looking up and lifting. Okay, um, here's another lecture. This is actually not from Cambridge University. We're very lucky at Cambridge because there is a Cambridge Union, which is the center of excellence in this country for public debate. So you may have heard of Yanis Yarofakis. He is a famous economist from Greece. Um, he was heavily involved in um, a situation about five years ago with a debt crisis in Greece. He is coming to talk to a public audience. And again, we, we could tell the children, why don't you go? Or we could simply go with them and encourage them and say, let's go. This lecture is happening 12 minutes away down there, 12 minutes walk. And it's happening tonight at six o'clock. There you go, a world uh, um, leading economist, controversial, got opinions about the EU, for example, about economics, let's hear them. What a great way to, to, to learn more about economics from this man himself, the extraordinary opportunity. And it happens to be happening tonight here in Cambridge. That's the Cambridge Edge. Um, and then one or two other things. This chap is called Cesare from Italy. He joined us, of course, in September when we started. He's very ambitious. Of course he is. He's at Carter Six in Cambridge. Of course he's ambitious. And he wants to get involved in engineering, in nuclear engineering in nuclear fusion engineering. So of course the physics teacher was delighted to hear this. And we said to him, well, what should we do about this? What, can, can we do more? So we then thought, well, how can we help someone who's interested in nuclear fusion? Well, let's find people who do nuclear fusion research. There are scientists in Oxford and there are scientists 15 minutes walk away here in Cambridge. There's a nuclear fusion group in Cambridge. And guess what? We now have one of their scientists working with Cesare on a project. The scientist comes in, Cesare visits, and it's only term two. And the project is quite an extraordinary one. They're going to create a device called a fusel where you can actually press a button and make nuclear fusion happen in the laboratory. Extraordinary uh, uh, a piece of kit that can be made. Obviously, we need the supervision of the nuclear fusion scientists, 
But this student here, Cesare, is going to make nuclear fusion in the laboratory. Extraordinary. Um, only because we're here and because it's so easy for us to work with these people. And they're so welcoming when you're, when you're polite and engaging with them. Um, I'm talking about standing up straight and giving account of yourself and developing your confidence. One way we do this is also to encourage the students to present here in our assemblies. We have two assemblies a week, each assembly, two students stand up and talk. And we have certain rules, you know, you, you can't use your phone. Um, you have to have no notes. We started off, you could have a presentation screen, but now you're not allowed a screen, you have to just talk. So if you've come across TED Talks, these are micro TED Talks that our students do. So because we've got these talks twice a week with two students in each running for the entire academic year, each student will do this four times and they get better at speaking each time. And that's that confidence that will enable them to be better prepared for those university interviews. Okay. This student's called Arena and her experience in September, she's interested in bioinformatics. Um, so she's a computer scientist student, she's a biology student as well as chemistry and mathematics and further mathematics. And we encouraged her to go into one of the museums here called the Whipple Museum. Uh, it's the Museum of the History of Science because the Whipple Museum contains lots of scientific equipment that was used to generate data. So bioinformatics is of course about how you use computing to handle large quantities of biological data. So she went to this museum and showed an interest. Uh, we introduced her, she was, she was then on her own. She was um, engaging with the museum and they were, they were so pleased with, with her, they gave her a project. This was last term, a project at the Museum of the History of Science. They also encouraged her to learn and research one of the, one of the exhibits and she now gives talks to visitors on that exhibit. So that's just another small example of what is possible by simply encouraging these great students to go into Cambridge and to make these connections. She's also got a placement next week in one of the biological science laboratories. Um, so it just shows what is available um, in this incredible city. And just to finish off the story about the Cambridge Edge, we of course will then help you to craft what you've got from these experiences into an incredibly strong university application, whether that's for medicine or engineering, computer science, whether it's for Cambridge or Oxford or UCL or Harvard or Yale or McGill University, wherever it is in the world, we've got the advice for that. And we also have access to companies called Medic Portal, Law Portal, University Admissions, A-List, specialist companies, part of the company that we belong to, who can also give yet more detailed specific advice. So we have a great support mechanism around us. Um, as it happens, I've been giving university advice for 20 years as a former principal. So I've got a lot of experience, particularly in biomedicine. And you can see Mr. Collier on the screen has got tre tremendous advice. So we're also involved, of course, in this process. And that brings me on to the last slide, just to reassure you, we are a new school, but we're a new school that have brought the pedigree from Cardiff. And that's being led by Mr. Collier who has run Cardiff Sixth Form College in Cambridge for many years, incredibly successfully, and myself and I've run another school here in Cambridge. So we do have a track record between us in our institutions that we're bringing here, and we're both very ambitious. So I'd invite you, if, if you're ambitious, if you're able, and if the, 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 the offering today sounds of interest, maybe this is the right school for you. You know, not all schools are the same. This is a particular kind of school for a particular kind of student. If you fancy the idea of spending two years studying with some of the, uh, the strongest students from all around the world, being inspired by them, sitting in a physics lesson next to somebody who will go on to study in Harvard, or maybe someone who goes to Cambridge in a year, someone who's gonna go and study engineering at uh, LS, uh, UCL perhaps. If you wanna be in that environment and go to Cambridge University lectures, and maybe do projects with the university departments. This could be the school for you. Excellent, well look, thank you so much. That's me, I hope that was informative. I would love to welcome you into the college if you'd like to come and visit. I'm gonna stop my screen, thank you so much, and pass you back to Mr. Collier.
Thank you very much, Dr. Davis. I see you're having trouble with my video at the moment, but uh, it will work, I'm sure. In a second. Can you, uh, can you hear me, Dr. Davis? Yep, coming through loud and okay. clear. Apologies, my video seems to be stalled at the moment, but uh, thank you very much. Um, very exciting uh, prospects for students here in uh, Cardiff Sixth Form College in uh, Cambridge. A um, little bit, a uh, little bit scary uh, because it's so ambitious. Uh, a little bit um, um, in terms of the the inputs. I, I don't know of any other school in the United Kingdom that's capable of giving that sort of level of input alongside the um, the, the academic pedigree that you get from uh, an already established system within CSFC Cardiff. But we don't actually have any um, any questions in the in the chat box here at the moment. But if anybody would like to. Uh, to actually um, put any chats in there, uh, questions in there, we'd be very happy to answer them. Um, I think that one of the, well, I have two, two daughters who have both now gone to university, but uh, whenever they are students are looking to uh, move on and live somewhere else, uh, I, I'm, I'm keen as a parent to check on two or three things. Uh, first of all, is the school is the school proven? And, and absolutely, CSFC, Cardiff Sixth College is proven. Um, secondly, um, where will we live? Will the accommodation be, be a standard which I, I would be happy with? And single ensuite accommodation in our boarding houses is of the highest quality. So that would be another box ticked. Uh, what would they eat? And, and would they be happy with their eating? Uh, and Holroyd Howe, the same company that runs uh, the catering uh, within CSFC Cardiff, also runs the catering here in CSFC Cambridge. And again, a highly um, uh, varied and nutritious international diet. So yes, I'd be happy with that. And would her friends around her be the sort of people that I would like my daughters to be friendly with? Are they ambitious? Are they exciting? Are they interesting? Are they friendly? And the answer to that is yes, we have a very um, strong admissions department, which makes sure that our students are in fact uh, of the highest quality and so the friends would be good. And would she be healthy? We all expect our, our young people to, to suffer ill health at some time, but we have a, a wonderful medical facility with nurses and matrons there to help people to get better when they are. So all those boxes are ticked for me as a parent, and I would happily send my children here if they were younger now. A quick in the box from uh, Slovenia to say, can students study A-levels in both campuses, like one year in Cambridge and one year in Cardiff? Um, not, not something that I would actually encourage, uh, simply because the, the, the modular system in, in Wales is set up slightly different to the, uh, the linear system within England, and, and so it is possible to transfer out of the modular system in Wales into the linear system in England, it is not possible to transfer the other way from England into Wales, but also both CSFC colleges have a distinct character. Uh, they have a distinct way of doing things. And I think that switching between the two, you are unlikely to get uh, the, the best of both worlds. You'll probably end up diluting your experience uh, to, in either one of them. So I would say uh, you need to decide where you want to go, why you want to do it, and, and be there, because it's very much a, a positive thing. Some people do change from the module to a linear system. They tend to be students who have not performed as well as they should within the AS section, and they need a different approach uh, towards their end levels. Um, how many of the CSFC IGCSE students are expected to study at Cambridge campus for A-levels in September 2023? We are currently looking, I think Ms. Walker is on the line, the registrar, sorry, the admissions manager in there for CSFC. I think we're looking at three or four students from the year 11 in Cardiff transferring across uh, to uh, Cambridge. Some of those are coming for the computer science and some of those because uh, of the academic challenge that's provided, as Dr. Davis has mentioned, uh, by being in uh, such a wonderful city as Cambridge. So yes, we have a transfer from uh, the year 11 in, uh, in Cambridge, but we also have students coming here uh, who are signed up already direct from their own countries and also students that are transferring from other schools within the United Kingdom into uh, our Cambridge campus. There is a lot of um, a, a lot of um, interest and inquiry from other schools within Cambridge uh, who study up to the age of 16, wanting students to transfer now that this wonderful opportunity is available for them in Cambridge for A-levels from us. Um, yeah, so the answer, I've, so I've, I've answered that question, I think, without seeing it. Uh, will you be able to accept a student transfer from another institution in Cambridge? Absolutely. We have a lot of inquiries here from uh, students studying currently in other schools in Cambridge who, who now see us as the, the, the icing on the cake, if you like, the, the, the final topping to get into top universities. Uh, the August recessional course, excellent, thank you. The August recession course is a specific course which we don't run in Cambridge itself, we run that in, in Cardiff, 
And there are various different reasons for that. And I know that uh, Mrs. Walker here is able to send to you, Leia, uh, a brochure which will tell you all about the pre-session course and why we do it. Um, so all of our students uh, have to understand the CSFC way. And if you've been selected for the August programme, it's because we think we can add extra value to you by completing that. Many of our August pre-sessional students from CSFC go on to greatness. Uh, we have a, a fantastic pedigree of students who just with a little extra boost have moved forward uh, and have understood uh, how they can uh, access excellence in their two year available course. So that happens once uh, in one place, that happens in Cardiff, and then our CSFC Cambridge students would transfer from the Orbit Recessional uh, to Cambridge here in September. We would handle that transfer. Uh, you would be brought over by uh, our school managers uh, safely and settled into the CSFC Cambridge campus. I guess that answers back maybe the first question up there. Is it possible to do both? I didn't think about that. Yeah, those students that get the August recessional course in Cardiff, you get to be in Cambridge too. Uh, there's a little bit of bonus of, of, both, of both worlds just there. Uh, good. Excellent. Can't see any more questions in the box there at the moment. Uh, let's see. No, okay. No, that's it. Um, well, I would say uh, Dr. Davis uh, did mention about the specificity of subjects uh, within the, the Cambridge uh, programme, but we are actually seeking to add another subject this year, uh, a subject which we think is particularly viable for, uh, for med medic students, uh, students want to study medicine. We are looking to add psychology as a fourth A-level subject in the block there. Uh, that will depend on demand, and if we have medical students here who wish to do psychology, we will then add psychology as a fourth subject. Currently, we have the humanity of economics there as well. But again, we're, we're not seeking to, to broaden this too, too much. We want specificity, we want students to be able to be excellent, and we want our staff to be able to command and have mastery of the subjects. So a uh, question here from Slavani again, um, how many students currently in Cambridge? Well, this, uh, for the students that will be coming in September 23, uh, there will be 54 to 56 students arriving in September 2023 to add to our current 20 students, which would make us 76 students in all in uh, September 2023. So currently 20 students, coming from nine different nationalities. Uh, it's a fantastic family to be in, uh, and every one of those students is, is gaining enormously from the experience that's here. Uh, student uh, student teacher ratio ratio uh, in uh, in our classes. Well, our maximum class size here within laboratories would be twenty, the same as it is in Cardiff. Uh, but our maximum class size in classrooms is actually fourteen currently. Uh, the, as Dr. Davis mentioned, we are in these beautiful old buildings in Cambridge. Uh, they are they are not built to have huge examination halls and big classrooms. So very small bespoke classrooms, uh, uh, depending on the number of students in class. Uh, but Dr. Davis, I'm gonna ask you to step in there because uh, you're the one that sets the timetable on the class sizes. So uh, our class sizes range uh, uh, across different subjects, uh, but what, what would you answer to that one? Yeah, a good question. Um, the class size here um, this year is really quite quite small actually. Um, I've got um, a class size ranging from uh, three to 12. I've got one class of 12, that's one of, the, uh, one of the math classes, one class of 11. And then the average is probably this year seven. Excellent. The, um, I would say, though, uh, it's a very interesting question, uh, and I think it's, it's an important question that people, people should ask, because it means that you're thinking sensibly about uh, education. But I would say that in class size in places like Cardiff, Sipson College in Cardiff and Cambridge is <clears throat> less important than it might be in another type of school. And when you have a, when you have a school where uh, the admissions policy is not so strict, and you have students who are um, very um, mixed ability, so you're allowing students here who, who are perhaps of a different range of academic ability, the teachers in the classes have to teach uh, and differentiated work and mixed ability classes, which can be extremely difficult. Meaning each student gets less teacher time. Here in in Cardiff, when our students are selected for excellence and their ability to be ambitious then actually um, the, the range of students in the class is narrower and therefore the differentiation is less and teachers can drive excellence in the classroom. So I think it's very important that um, really, uh, having, having larger classrooms is not a really a big problem in a school which is excellent. But uh, as Dr. Davis has said, they're relatively small sizes anyway. Do we have focus in the classrooms? Uh, Dr. Davis, uh, your slides. Yes, 
Your yeah, we've got plenty of graphs. Yeah. Um, Your pictures were all taken, I think, in the classrooms here within CSFC Cambridge. So the pictures on Dr. Davis' presentation were all here uh, within, uh, within Cambridge. Any Thai students in Cambridge? We have lots of Thai student applications. Uh, I know Thai students here at the moment, uh, certainly Singapore. In the 20 students we have at the moment, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, um, Italy, France, Russia, Nigeria. Oh, I lost one. Um, Myanmar. Oh, well. <laughs> so, uh, calling us Myanmar. Myanmar, I beg your pardon. We have Myanmar. There we go. So it's so a, a wide range of students from from all over all over the world. But your nationality is not a, a barrier to your learning here in CSFC Cambridge uh, at all. Wonderful. Okay, um, I have a, a, a range of staff who uh, on the line here who actually work in country with uh, many of our students and their, their families. Um, so Blignot, Tony's up there. Jasmine's up there. Uh, can I see anybody else? I'm having a look here. Like I've got admission staff as well. Any questions you, you have that uh, commonly come from, from uh, your or areas about the new offering in CSFC Cambridge? Th thanks, Gar uh, Gareth, and thank you, uh, Dr. Julian. Yeah, you, you're right about the Myanmar student. We have one. And also for this coming year, 2023, we've already interviewed two students from Thailand uh, who are suitable candidates for, for, uh, for Cambridge. Just the other thing, I will be in uh, Hong Kong um, this coming week with Henrietta Lightwood, our um, group marketing director, for, for 10 days. And we're attending two fairs there if there are any students who want to see us. And then I'll be in Singapore the week after that and the week after that in uh, Malaysia. But of course, any queries at any time. Um, and this coming weekend, I, I have a fair in Thailand as well, which is the seat of here. So I'd love to talk to any Thais and tell them more about... Uh, our lovely campuses. Perfect. Thank you very much, Tony. That's, uh, that's much appreciated. Uh, it, it is important you get in early. Uh, it's a it's a very specific and very exciting offer here in in Cambridge. Uh, and those students that are in at the ground level in years one and two uh, will certainly gain the uh, enormous amount of benefit from being here. But uh, it's popular. Uh, please do uh, make sure you contact Michelle Walker at um, uh, at uh, the admissions department to make sure you express your interest. I want to say thank you to everybody that's been online today. Uh, if you want to know any further information, please do email admissions at ccoax.com. Uh, I will put that in the message box here and uh, you will be able to admissions you will be able to get uh, an email um, response from our admissions team who will be able to answer any questions uh, for you uh, but delighted to, to see you all today thank you very much for turning up thank you dr davis uh, thank you to all staff that are online here uh, and uh, students for showing an interest and i hope to see you amongst our most ambitious uh, students in the future thank you very much thank you all very much thank you Bye.